What a joy it is to be here this afternoon. Just to remind you, we are studying the series on the life of Joseph. On Saturday, they will teach you how to teach the life of Joseph. They will give you a booklet. Then there will be DVDs. If you like to conduct a Bible study with your friends, come this Saturday so you will learn how to teach the life of Joseph. Today, I want to continue about the life of Joseph. If you don't mind, why don't we all stand up and pray? Let us pray first. Father God in heaven, what a joy it is to be gathered together. What a joy it is to have the freedom to worship. And once again, we lift up to you our president, we ask that you guide him, especially in his desire and attention to help this country become righteous. I pray you give him wisdom. We also pray that you continue to expose those who are dishonest. Be the one to get rid of them and replace them with honest politicians honest bureaucrats. Lord, we need honest men and women who love to serve you, who love to serve this country. So will you have mercy on our country? Do a real transformation that this nation will truly become a Christian nation. And I pray for all the families represented here, those who are hurting, those who are discouraged, that you will speak to them today. And I commit to you the message today override my preparation, teach me what to say, what not to say, and I commit to you, those who are hurting, that you'll speak to all of us. We commit to you the rest of this service. Guide us, speak to us. In Jesus' name we all pray, amen. Thank you, please sit down. I want you to name some successful people in your mind to your neighbors, all right? Name them. Name a few names. Who are successful in your mind? Can you whisper to your neighbor? Can you think of some successful people? All right. Whisper them to your neighbor. Mayroon na ba? May na-issue na ba kayo? Mayroon na? All right. Next. Name some good people. Name some good people. In your mind, they are good people to your neighbors. <laughs> I heard that. Now, let me ask you a question. Are they the same? Successful people that you just mentioned and good people that you just mentioned, are they the same? Yes or no? Why not? Was Paul a good man? Was the Apostle Paul a good man? Was he successful? Was Jesus a good man? Was he successful? Was Jeremiah a good man? Was he successful? Why don't we connect success with being good? Because something is wrong with our definition. If something is wrong with your definition, you're going to have a problem. It will affect your behavior. So give me a definition of a successful man. Whisper to your neighbor. How do you define success? Do you like this definition? A successful man is one who makes more money than his wife can spend. You agree? A successful woman is one who can find such a man. Tama ba yan? The truth is this. If you look at Webster's Dictionary, it defines success just like the ways of the world. Accomplishment, money, position, power. Am I correct? That's what you equate success with. Somebody who has power, position, money. Yes or no? But is that the right definition? Accomplishing your goals. Is that really the right definition? I'm reminded of the story of two jockeys. What enters your mind when you think of jockeys? Not brief. Don't think of the brief, okay? They ride horses and they race, okay? They race. Now, these two jockeys were known for horse racing. 
very expensive. In that particular race, they were head to head, and then something happened. Both of them fell from the horses. And what's amazing, they, they were so fast, they fell down, and then they rode again, they were able to catch up. The first one who fell down, his name was, let's call him Bong, okay? So Bong, example, see Bong. Okay? The next one, his name is Bob. Would you believe it? Eventually, Bob caught up, and the jockey, his, whose name was Bob, he won. Now, when Bob won the race, he looked at his boss. He looked at his master, the owner of the horse. And the owner of the horse was not happy at all. And Bob was saying, in Tagalog, ano ba? In English, what is it? I won, and you are not happy? The boss said, you rode the wrong horse. Mali ang kabayo mo. Takbo ka ng takbo, mali. My whole point is this. Success is not always what you think. Just because you achieve your goal may not be like that. There are many Christians today, I'm afraid, when they meet their master someday, when you stand before God, and God will say, you know what? That is not my goal for you. What's my basis? Let me share with you from the book of uh, Matthew to help you understand what is success. Everybody, let's read this together. Matthew 25, verse 21. Everybody. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Notice. The master said, Well done. Meaning, he was able to accomplish something. What did he accomplish? Whatever the master asked him to do. Good and, notice the emphasis, faithful. You were faithful with a few things. I will not put you in charge of many things. What is the Bible telling us? To be faithful is the secret of success. If you are faithful with a few things, God is saying someday He will entrust to you something more. This is a divine principle. You be faithful with whatever God has given you, and then God will be the one to enlarge your influence, your responsibilities. Notice, the same idea, but found in the book of Luke. Everybody, let's read the book of Luke. He said to him, everybody, well done, good slave, because you have been faithful in a very little thing. You are to be in authority over ten cities. People don't realize your faithfulness today will impact your eternity. Let me repeat. What you do with your life, whether you are faithful or not, is going to impact someday. Do not ever think this life is everything. I'm here on earth 70, 80, 90 years. You'll be here. But the truth is this. Sooner or later, you and I will die. After we die, we meet our master. Now, when you meet your master, listen to me. What will your master say? Someday when you meet Jesus, what will Jesus say? Will Jesus say, well done, good and faithful servant? This is my discovery. At the end of the day, it does not matter what people say about you. At the end of the day, what is most important is what Jesus will say. Today, people can criticize you. People can say bad things about you. That is secondary. My advice is this. What will Jesus say when you meet him? You know what's my prayer? My prayer is very simple. Someday, when I meet my Savior, when I meet Jesus, Jesus will tell me, well done, good and faithful servant. Will you pray for me? That that is what I will hear. And that is what I long for. That to me is success. It does not matter <clears throat> how much money you have. 
what the newspapers say about you. I don't care what position you accomplish. Praise God if you reach the top. But what will Jesus say when you meet him? <coughs> and what is very sad is most of us don't think about this. You come here every Sunday. You go about your work. But you have never asked, am I truly successful? <coughs> Everybody, our message today is very simple. Everybody, read this. <coughs> Louder. <coughs> Turn to your neighbor. Look at them in the eyes. Tell them, be faithful. Be faithful. Notice, what is faithfulness? Look at the spelling. Faithful. So to be faithful, you need to be full of faith. To be full of faith, you need to know the object of your faith. Who is the object of our faith? God. Jesus, you cannot have full of faith in God if you don't know the Lord. Therefore, to be faithful, you need to know the Lord. Intimacy with Him. The more I know Jesus, <clears throat> the more I trust Him. The more I trust Him, the more I want to serve Him. The more I know Jesus, the more I love Him. The more I know Jesus, the more I'm able to be faithful to Him. If I don't know the Lord, I cannot be faithful to Him. Let me ask you a question. Do you know the Lord? You may know about the Lord. Do you know Him? What is faithfulness, everybody? Let's read this together. Doing God's will, God's way, to the best of your ability, in the power of the Holy Spirit, for His glory. I want to emphasize doing God's will, not your will, God's way, not your way to the best of your ability. Have you done your best? If you have done your best, you don't have enough power. You need the Holy Spirit. So that is faithfulness. Joseph is a man who is faithful. You see that in his life. I want us to look at Joseph. Are you ready? Turn your Bible to Genesis chapter 41. Quick review, as you are turning your Bibles, look at the life of Joseph. Joseph was a favored son, betrayed by his brothers. Imagine you are Joseph, betrayed by your brothers, dumped into a pit, left to die. And then they decided to sell you as a slave. And then you were promoted. And then you had victory over sin. And then you were falsely accused. Then you went back to jail. You went to prison. And then he was promoted in prison. And then he was forgotten. And then by the grace of God, he was promoted to become the prime minister. What is the common denominator? Not the ups and downs. Joseph was faithful as a son. Joseph was faithful when he was a slave. Joseph was faithful when he was put in jail. Joseph was faithful all the way. Faithful as a son, faithful as a slave, faithful as a manager, faithful when he was in prison. Why? Because the secret of faithfulness is knowing the Lord. What's my basis? Let's read this together. Are you ready now? All right. The Lord was with Joseph. He became successful. What's the secret of faithfulness? God. You see, when Joseph was down, he knew God was with him. That is so emphasized in the Bible. Look at Genesis verse 3, 39 verse 3. His master saw that the Lord was with him. The master saw. How can the master see that God was with Joseph? By his behavior. Let me ask you a question. When people look at you, do they see God in your life? In the case of Joseph, the Lord was with him and how the Lord caused all that he did to prosper. The secret of success is knowing God, allowing God to have control in your life. And the result is faithfulness. You will notice this again and again. 
Verse 9, There is no one greater in this house than I, and he has withheld nothing from me except you. You are his wife. How then could I do this great evil and sin against God? Do you notice, when you are faithful to God, you'll be faithful to people. Joseph was faithful to God. How could I do this evil and sin against God? He was faithful to God. Therefore, he was faithful to his employer. Joseph said, how can I do this evil? How can I sin? Your master, what? He withheld nothing from me except you. You are his wife. Listen to me. If you are faithful to God, you'll be faithful to people. If you are faithful to God, you'll be faithful to your employer. If you are faithful to God, you'll be faithful to your wife. If you are faithful to God, you'll be faithful to your spouse. Listen to me. The reason why people are not faithful today is because they are not faithful to God. If I am faithful to God, I'll be faithful to you. If I am faithful to God, I will be faithful to my wife. If I am not faithful to God, I will not be faithful at my work. I will not be faithful in what I do. You know why? The key to faithfulness is God. Can you turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, be faithful to God. Be faithful to God first, and then you'll be faithful to others. Joseph was, first of all, faithful to God because he knew him. Everybody, I'm just reviewing what we've discussed. The Lord was with Joseph, extended kindness to him, gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. When Joseph was put in jail, again the Bible tells us, the Lord was with him. Do you believe God is with you all the time? Yes or no? Good times, bad times, is God with you? All right, if God is with you, do you show that God is with you? Or do you act as if God is not with you? That's the difference. Is God with you all the time? Louder. So if you have a problem, is God with you? All right, turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, because God is with us, be faithful. Be faithful. You know why? When you are tempted to compromise like Joseph, look, the chief jailer did not supervise anything under Joseph's charge because the Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made to prosper. Joseph was so faithful. Listen to me now. Knowing God is with you will change your behavior. You will now work as if God is watching you. So Joseph was in jail. When he was in jail, his behavior was exemplary. Matino si Joseph. Even he was in prison. Hindi siya dadabog dabog. Hindi siya tatamad tamad. What is dabog dabog in English? Daybog, daybog. The guy was faithful. Why? He practiced the presence of God. Faithful to God, you'll be faithful to men. Faithful to God, you'll be faithful to employer. Years ago, somebody told me <clears throat> he does not like to hire Christians. Sabi ko, bakit? Hey, Christian, tatamad-tamad. Sabi ko, what do you mean? <clears throat> if they do submit a report, they have to attend a meeting, they will tell me, sorry, yeah, boss, I cannot. I have the group meeting. Sorry, yeah, boss. I have ministry. Listen to me. Never use ministry as an excuse to not do your job well. Never use ministry to the Lord so that your performance in your company is going to be affected because you are to be faithful to God means you are faithful to your employer. <laughs> Today, I have people telling me, I want to hire people from CCF. Sabi ko bakit? Eh, CCF, matino eh. They go there on time. They submit the report on time. Totoo ba? Of course. CCFers, praise God, okay? You are what? Faithful. Yung mga hindi pumapalakpak, <clears throat> baka hindi ka faithful. Do you know, if you are a follower of Jesus, you should be exemplary. That's the key to success. Be faithful. What's my basis? Let me share with you from the Bible. God-centered. Let's read this. Everybody. Colossians 3.22. Everybody. Slaves. In all things. Notice. In all things. Obey those who are your masters on earth. Not with 
external service. The word external service is from the Greek word ophthalmology. Pampakitang tao lang for the eyes. You know, some people, when the boss is watching, sipag sipag. Or when the boy is not watching, ano ba yan? Okay. As those who merely please men, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Be centered on the Lord. Everybody, next verse. Whatever you do, do your work. What is the name of heart today? May puso. May malasakit. You do your best. Why? As for the Lord, rather than for men. If you are faithful to God, you'll be faithful to your employer. Do it for the Lord, not for men. Why? Knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, it is the Lord Christ whom you serve. In other words, faithful to God, you'll be faithful to your work. And if you are faithful to God, faithful to your work, you will do your best. I want to share with you the key to success is be faithful. What does it mean to be faithful? Are you ready to learn from the life of Joseph? By the way, you will tell me, Peter, hindi mo alam ang boss ko, ang sungit-sungit. How can I serve him? Ang kuripot-kuripot. Why will I serve him? Do you have those boss? O kung, kung sa tabi mo, huwag mo tingnan. Now, listen. Ang sabi ng Bible? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 18. Everybody read. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all respects, not only to those who are good and gentle, but to those who are unreasonable. Faithfulness is not dependent on others. Faithfulness is between you and the Lord. Whatever you do, be faithful. Can you turn to your neighbor one more time? Tell your neighbor, gising na, be faithful. Be faithful. Do it as unto the Lord. May I now speak to all husbands and wives. Ladies, some of you are married to men who may not be the best husband. You may be married to some men who are not really responsible. That's one issue. But no matter what, you have to be the best wife. Not because your husband deserves it, but because God expects you to be the best wife. Some of you men, you are married to some wives who are very cranky, some women are very whatever, okay? Nagging, makulit, some tamad, whatever it is. Gentlemen, be the best husband. Why? Because you want to be faithful to the Lord. If you are seated beside your family members, listen to me now. Husbands and wives, you turn to each other and say, Honey, baby, I will be the best husband for you. Okay? And if you are a wife, you say, Honey, baby, I will be the best wife for you. Okay? All right. Say that to each other. Now, kung katabi mo, hindi misis mo, relax lang. Okay? Now, if you are children, you turn to your parents, you tell your parents, Dad, Mom, I will do my best to be the best daughter, to be the best son. I'll be faithful. In school, I'll do my best. When I'm working, I'll do my best. You see, faithfulness is doing your best for the Lord. You want to be successful, yes or no? Be faithful. How can you be faithful? Learn from Joseph. Joseph did everything to the best of his ability. Let's read this together. Excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. Now, you do that with your company. You do that with your employer. You do that in school. Be the best. And the world will take notice. They'll say, you know what? This guy is different. And you do it because you are faithful to the Lord. You know why you should do your best? Because 99.9% .9 is not enough. What is 99.9%? Example, 99.9%. .9 
20,000 incorrect drug prescriptions per week. 99.9%, 500 incorrect surgical operations each week. 12 newborns given to the wrong parents daily. Don't say 99.9 .9 is good enough. Do your best. 22,000 checks deducted from wrong bank account each hour. My friend, God wants us to do our best. Amen? So turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, do your best. Joseph is so God-centered that when he appeared before Pharaoh, Joseph said, it is not in me. God will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. You see, to be faithful to God, you look for opportunities to give God the glory. Pharaoh was asking Joseph, Joseph, balitang balita ko, magaling ka. You are good in interpretation. Joseph said, boss, 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 not me. It is not in me. It is God. Do you take occasions to give God the glory? I know of a young girl who did her best in her education for one single purpose. She said, so that someday I will give God the glory. I suggest you do the same. People are saying, you know, the problem with Christian businessmen, they tend to be lazy. With Christian workers, they tend to be lazy. I'm going to change your attitude. From now on, you look at the marketplace as your opportunity to bring God glory. If you are in business, be the best businessman in the world for His glory. If you are an employee, be successful in your career. Why? For God's glory. Amen? Is that okay with you? So turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, tayo. do your best. Okay, tayo. Okay. Hindi pwede banjing, banjing, okay? Now, I don't know what is that word in English. Banjing, banjing. All right, everybody, read the next verse. Joseph said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh's dreams are one and the same. God has told Pharaoh what he's about to do. Notice, he keeps on emphasizing God. Now, I don't know last week whether uh, I told you what happened here. I gave the audience suspense. You know why? The Bible tells us after Joseph was telling Pharaoh what God is about to do, the proposal seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his servants. Did you know what was the proposal of Pharaoh? Did, your, did our pastor discuss with you what was the proposal of Joseph? Yes or no? We did not tell you. We purposely kept it in suspense. You know why? Today, I'm going to tell you what was the proposal of Joseph. What was his proposal? Listen. He told, Joseph, he told Pharaoh, Bossing, my problem tayo. Seven years of abundance. Next seven years, wala pong pagkain. Magugutom tayo lahat. He told Pharaoh the problem. But because he was faithful, he did not tell Pharaoh just the problem. He told Pharaoh the solution. Now, this is amazing. Most people are good in telling us the problem. But very few can tell us the solution. Not Joseph. Joseph told Pharaoh the problem, and he gave him a proposal. The Bible tells us the proposal seemed good. Do you know the proposal? Let me tell you. What was the proposal? It was happening in Joseph. Number one, look for a man discerning and wise. Set him over the land of Egypt. You see, Joseph became a management expert. Where did he learn management? Where? Shepherd boy, as a slave, as a manager, he was put in jail, became a jail warden. He learned how to be a manager in the school of hard knocks. His school is called Believe it, University of Believe it, located in Egypt. Nakakulong po si Joseph. He learned his He learned by experience. A slave, a manager, a jail warden. He learned all of this through the hard ways. Listen to me. God is developing you to become a leader. He was developing Joseph. So Joseph was amazing. Look at his 
wisdom that's from God. He said, Let Pharaoh take action, take action, appoint overseers in charge of the land. Let him exact fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven years of abundance. Look at the management principle. Joseph was a faithful servant. He thought of the solution and he was very specific. My program po, appoint overseers. The principle of what? Delegation. The principle of accountability. Put them in charge. Next, he told Pharaoh, exact a fifth of the produce. The principle of savings. You want to be a good CEO? You want to be a good leader? Joseph was smart. Appoint leaders. Make them in charge. Start saving. You know, I, was, I have a Korean friend, and he told me about his frustration. He put up a company in the Philippines to provide employment. He came up with a retirement program, meaning if the employee will save 5% of their income, example, 5% is, let's say, 50 pesos or 100 pesos a day, he will match it, 100 pesos. So it goes to a retirement fund. What shocked him was, he said, the culture, the culture of his employees. They don't know how to save. Once they have enough savings, he matched the savings, they will go to him. Can we borrow money? Can we borrow money? So he was surprised. Why do you want to borrow money? He understands if you borrow money because of medical emergency purposes. Hindi po emergency. You know what they're buying money for? Guess. I want to buy TV, television. He said, you don't need television. Saving ka muna. No. You see, that culture of not able to think ahead of saving was so bad that the whole retirement program was destroyed because everybody was borrowing. My friend, listen to me. Faithfulness to God means you learn to think ahead. You be thorough. Attention to details. Look at what Joseph did. Let them gather all the food of those good years that are coming. Store up the grain of food in the cities under Pharaoh's authority and let them guard it. Notice, very specific. Gather. Hindi lang gather. Store them up. Hindi lang store up. He told Pharaoh. Guard it. Are you thorough? I've discovered many people are good in criticizing. Many people are good in looking at problems. Magaling makakita ng problema. Yan, problema ito, problema ito, problema yan. But listen to me. Do you offer suggestions? Would you want to change? If you want to be successful, listen to me. You tell your boss, not just a problem. Give him a solution. Boss, this is my proposal. Every time pastors come to us, and the pastors tell me, we have a problem. What's the problem? Then, next, what's your solution? Do we, do we have a parking problem in CCF? Yes or no? Louder. Yes. What's the solution? I have good news for you. It's starting next year. We will launch our phase two construction. We will build another thousand parking space, double the, uh, almost the same size as this. Are you happy for that? Praise God. Now, are you part of the problem or are you part of the solution? See, two kinds of people in CCF, two kinds, the givers and the takers. Problemers and problem solvers. What are you? Are you part of the problem? Are you part of the solution? Everybody, look at me. Let's be faithful, okay? Faithful means what? I am part of the solution. Stop criticizing the government. You know why? If you criticize the government, wala mangyari sa atin yan. Are you having a plan? Do you have options? Do you know why we do what we do? Because for me, the hope of this country is a spiritual renewal. The hope for this country is to have leaders 
who can become followers of Jesus. And that's what we try to do. We may not solve everything, but we will do everything within our means to do our part. Amen? All right. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, be faithful. Be faithful, okay? Now, Joseph, had the amazing proposal, let the food become as a reserve for the land for the seven years of famine, while, which will occur in the land of Egypt, so that the, so that the land will not perish during the famine. What was Joseph doing? He's thinking of the future. Let the food become as a reserve. Now, let me ask you a question. As a faithful servant of the Lord, are you planning for your life? Do you have plans for your life? Do you think ahead? May I speak to parents? Parents, wave at me. Those of you father and mothers, please wave at me. Say hi to me. Hi. Yeah, mga parents, are you saying hi to me? Now, listen to me now. 10 years from now, 20 years from now, how do you see your children? Do you have any plan? 20 years from now, how do you see your financial situation? Singles, wave at me, singles. Singles, wave at me. Yeah, mga singles. Yun mga favorite ko, mga singles. Katulad ko, bata pa. Singles, listen to me, singles. If you don't change the direction of your life, if you keep on going where you are going, how do you see yourself 20 years from now? You see, our problem is this. You don't take the responsibility to plan ahead. To plan ahead does not mean you're stubborn. But you say, Lord, this is what I think I need to do. I surrender my plan to you. You have to surrender your plan, but you got to think. You have to be thorough. You have to work hard. You have to be diligent. What is diligent in Tagalog? Masipag. What is the opposite of diligent? Banjing, banjing. What is banjing, banjing? Yan. What do you like to do? Internet, computer games, watching TV. Tambay, tambay dyan. Tambay dito, tambay dyan. Listen to me. You need to take responsibility. Be faithful to the Lord. Can you turn to your neighbor one more time? Okay? Tell your neighbor. Look at them in the eyes. Okay? Look at them in the eyes and tell them, be faithful. Pharaoh said to his servants, can we find a man like this? You see, Pharaoh was so impressed. He's about to make the most important decisions of his life. What decision? Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has informed you of all of this, there is no one as discerning, as wise as you are. Therefore, what will he do? You shall be over my house according to your command. All my people shall do homage to you. Only in the throne I will be greater than you. The Bible tells us Joseph was promoted to the highest position at the age of 30. Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Ladies and gentlemen, Pharaoh was promoted. Why? Of course, number one, God is in control. Yes or no? But humanly speaking, Joseph was faithful to God. Because he was faithful to God, he was faithful as a slave. He was faithful to his boss, Potiphar. When the wife seduced him, he was faithful to the husband. He told the wife, I cannot do this against your husband. He was faithful to God. I cannot do this sin against the Lord. When he was put in prison, he could have been complaining. He could have been blaming everybody. He said, no, I will be faithful. I will do my assignment. Joseph was faithful all the way. As a son, he was faithful. As a slave, he was faithful. In jail, he was faithful. And now, he became a prime minister. My friend, stop dreaming that if you go to a casino, someday you will win and your life will be happily, you live happily ever after, or you buy sweepstakes and suddenly, boom, I have so much money, or I will marry somebody very rich. Listen to me. Those are wishful thinking. 
the path to success will involve pits, prisons, trial, false accusation, all kinds of problems. But God is with you. Amen? If God is with you and you are faithful to Him, I guarantee you. Will there be success? Yes, of course. Success is guaranteed. Who will guarantee you success? Now, it may not mean money, title, everything, but I'm going to tell you something. You will live a life of no regret. That is Joseph. Let me ask you, how are you doing? Are you faithful? Well, I'm privileged today to let you hear an amazing testimony from one of our sisters. Let us welcome Joanne. Good afternoon. When God called me to work in CCF, He called me into a life of simplicity and service. I was hired as a contractual admin assistant for six months. I thought that my work here would just be temporary because in my mind, it was not commensurate to my education and training. I had been a scholar in an exclusive school in high school and in the Ateneo in college. Being the eldest among four, I naturally had it in my heart to seek a comfortable life for my family. I had my own plans on how to achieve and acquire, but God had other plans for me and His plans are for my best interest. God made me realize that all the trainings and opportunities I had in the past were arranged by Him in order to equip me for the work that He was preparing me to do. I was shaped, both in skills and experience, exactly for this job. God told me that He doesn't deserve leftovers. He requires excellence. And if I am able to do it, why not do it for Him here in CCF? Despite all my insecurities, God made it clear through His Word, the peace in my heart, my parents' blessing, and my circumstances that if I didn't obey His call to continue working in CCF, I would miss out on God's best. God, as my big boss, called me into a life of excellence in my private worship and in the office. My work can be very demanding, but I made it a point not to neglect my personal relationship with Him. As I do my work unto Him, He blesses the works of my hands so that I can become a blessing to others. God changed my attitude about my job description too. He called me to perform each task with a joyful heart, no matter how humble, because true success in His kingdom is really about doing faithfully what He has called me to do. After two years, I was privileged to be promoted as executive assistant to the senior pastor. It has been five years since I started working here, and I can confidently say that I never lacked any good thing throughout my stay in CCF. As my great shepherd, God is faithful in taking care of all my needs. I am also able to contribute to family expenses and my brother's education and even support missionaries. Whenever I feel exhausted and discouraged, God provides encouragement through His Word. I also have a gracious boss who always tells me how much he appreciates me and reminds me that even if I work behind the scenes, my job impacts thousands, even hundreds of thousands for Jesus. My place has always been at the backstage, and I have learned to embrace and love what I do. I prepare whatever is needed and assist others to bloom. However, the impact of what I'm doing is so discreet that in my heart, I started to long for evident results. I started thinking about how fruitful my life can become if I were a campus missionary. But then God was not calling me to become one. I know I missed so many opportunities to share the gospel and to disciple in the campus while I was still studying. But God told me it's not over yet. His word was, go back where you came from, in 1 Kings 19. This meant leaving my comfort zone to exhaust all means to reach out to my former classmates and friends and share God's love to them. This I can do without leaving my job. So I started investing time with them one at a time, building relationships, sharing God's love, and helping them grow in their newfound relationship with God. God has given me a clear mission for my life. Whatever my job is, all my energy should be focused on what is most important, sharing the gospel and discipling young women so that they can do the same for others. 
For many years, I have been serving in Elevate Marikina and discipling young ladies. Yet my disciples were not multiplying generationally. With God's encouragement, I continued discipling my ladies faithfully. I intentionally mentored, prayed for, and challenged each one of them to lead their own small groups. By God's grace, in a span of five months, seven of them caught the vision and started leading their own groups. God calls me to be faithful with the things He entrusted to me at present and to be ready for His coming. My heart's desire is to hear Him say to me one day, Well done, good and faithful servant. I am Joanna Tapar, an executive assistant, a discipler, and a slave of Jesus. To Him be the glory. Praise God. Now, some of you may not realize, Joan is my executive assistant. Joan is a very faithful servant of the Lord. You know why? She does the extra mile. When we have board meetings, and we meet in CCF, and it's late already, I'm always surprised. After the board meeting, I will see her, and she's still in the office, waiting for any instruction. My friend, if you are faithful to God, you'll be faithful to men. If you are faithful to God, you'll be faithful to your job. It is so important you understand. Faithfulness is a function of your relationship with the Lord. Faithful to God, faithful to people. Can you read this together with me? Doing little things well is a step toward doing big things better. I won't be surprised someday as God will expand the borders of Joan. She is, she is, she is helping a lot. What about you? You like to really be successful? Yes or no? All right. Be faithful. Can you tell your neighbor one more time? Be faithful. Yeah. You know what Joseph did? He was so faithful. During the seven years of plenty, the land brought forth abundantly. As prophesied. So he gathered all the food of these seven years which occurred in the land of Egypt and placed the food in the cities. He placed in every city the food from its own fields. Joseph stored up grain in great abundance like the sun of the sea. Until he stopped measuring it, it was beyond measure. Listen to me. To be faithful... It's difficult at times. You know why? You don't see the result. In the case of Joseph, imagine how people will be criticizing him. Joseph, anong ginagawa mo? Why are you taking away 20% of our income? Why are you taking away 20% of our products when there's no famine? There's no problem. Why are you doing that? Understand? For seven years, Joseph could have become lazy. He could have said, you know what? Oh, no, no. maybe there's no need. Listen to me. Faithfulness is you keep doing it. Even if you don't feel like doing it. People may laugh at you. Just keep doing it. Because faithfulness is not always rewarded immediately. Number two, it is not appreciated at times. But watch this story. Later on, before the year what did I say? Before the year of famine, two sons were born to Joseph, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bore him. He had two sons. During the time of plenty, Joseph named the firstborn Manasseh. He said, God has made me forget all my trouble and all my father's household. For the first time, you get a glimpse of the soul, of the heart of Joseph. We don't know how he was feeling during those 13 years, from 17 to 30. Now you know. You know how he was feeling? God has made me forget all my trouble and all my father's household. The point is this. There are obstacles to faithfulness if you are not able to let go of the past. You see, Joseph was deeply hurt. The Bible tells us, forget all of my trouble. The guy was so wounded in his spirit by the betrayal of his brothers. Listen to me. 
if you don't know how to let go of the past, if you don't know how to forgive, there is no way you can always be faithful to the Lord. You know why? You will be angry at people. And when you're angry at people, if you are not careful, you become angry at God. And you can say, Lord, why did you allow this to happen? Lord, why did you make this happen? Lord, why, why, why? Listen to me. The grace of God enabled Joseph. I love this phrase. God, supernaturally, God has made me what? Forget all my past. Does it mean he forgot the names of his brothers? No. Does it mean he forgot his father? No. It's a figure of speech, meaning I am no longer paralyzed by my past. Some of you are paralyzed by your past. Perhaps you have been hurt. Perhaps some Christians have betrayed you. Perhaps your own family members have betrayed you. And you have a hard time moving forward. You are cynical. You are in pain. Learn to focus on God. Joseph said, Lord, you help me forget my past. That's so important. Joseph could have said, it's impossible for me to do a good job. I am not an Egyptian. I am not a college graduate. I am only a slave. How can I be a prime minister? Joseph could have all kinds of reasons why he will fail. No, no, no. Forgetting what lies behind. Amazing principle. Let's read this together. Philippians chapter 3. You want to be faithful? This is the secret. You want to be successful? Here is the secret. Everybody read. But one thing I do. One thing. What do you do? Everybody read. Forgetting what lies behind, I reach forward to what lies ahead. Some of you cannot forget the past. I know some people to this day, when I talk to them, they repeat the past. They repeat the hurt. They don't move forward. Stuck in the past. No way you can be faithful to the Lord. You know why? You keep looking at the past. Learn to be like Joseph. Forgetting what lies behind. Everybody read, I press on. You see, to be faithful, you learn to let go of the past. You press on. How do you press on? I press on toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You cannot let go of the past until you have something better. You will keep thinking of the past if you don't have something better. Look at me. We have something better. I don't know your past. Some of you are into, maybe you don't like yourself. You fell into immorality. You have a bad relationship. Perhaps you are trapped with pornography. I don't know what it is. You can let those past go, provided you understand you have a better future. You start walking with Jesus. Realize the greatness that is yet to come. You reach forward. But if you don't understand your future, you don't understand the destiny of the people of God, you keep thinking of the past, you are not going to be faithful. You will be discouraged. The name of the second son is Ephraim. He said, God has made me fruitful. So the meaning of the word Ephraim is fruitful. In order to be fruitful, you must learn to forget the past. Focus on the future. And that is what happened to Joseph. Joseph was faithful, but there are obstacles to faithfulness. Not being able to let go not being able to let God take over what you cannot control. You let God take care of your past mistakes. You let God take care of your past failures. Comprende? Do not let the devil keep on reminding you. You are no good. You are no good. You are a failure. The Bible tells us, when the seven years of plenty which had been in the land of Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began to come, as Joseph had said, then there was famine in all the lands. But in all the land of Egypt, there was bread. The beauty of preparation, the beauty of faithfulness. In due time, people will appreciate your faithfulness. You know why? Look at what happened. 
in due time. When all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried out to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph. Whatever he says to you, you shall do. Joseph was vindicated. In the past, people must have been laughing at him. Ano mang ginagawa mo? Save and save. Useless. The day will come. Listen to me. Today, people may be laughing at you. You know why? They are saying, Ano mang ginagawa ninyo? Why are you going to worship service? You watch Manny Pacquiao fight. You watch movie. Why are you so honest? We are all making money here. What's wrong with you? Listen to me. That's okay. Be faithful to whom? To God. In due time, God will reward you. In due time, God will vindicate you. In the meantime, it's okay when people make fun of us. Amen? So turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, be faithful. When the famine was spread over all the face of the earth, then Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians, and the famine was severe in the land of Egypt. Notice, it was a national disaster, not just a national disaster. It was global. But what happened? The people of all the earth came to Egypt to buy grain. If you were Joseph, will you allow them to buy grain? Or you will say, ah, para sa amin lang ito. What will you do? Listen to me. When God bless you, it is never meant for yourself. When God bless us, it is never meant just for our family. When God bless you, you are to be a blessing to others, to the world. Don't keep the blessing to CCF alone. That's why we teach people, don't be takers, be what? Givers. You must have the mindset that God has chosen us to be like Joseph, to be a blessing. Not just to yourself, not just to your family, to be a blessing to everybody. Are you a blessing? Yes or no? Well, starting today, let's be a blessing. Okay with you? So turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I will bless you. No, don't abuse. Okay, sa akin ng pera. No, but you can bless people in many ways. Don't bless people with what you don't have. Bless people with what you can do. Now, here's a problem. Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt. And Jacob said to his sons, Why are you staring at one another? Ano ginagawa ninyo? Who are the sons of Jacob? The brothers of Joseph. And the Bible tells us, Jacob said, Behold, I have heard there is grain in Egypt. Go down there, buy some for us from that place so that we may live and not die. Those brothers lack leadership. They are just looking at each other. Sige, it's called tambay, tambay. Tingin ng tingin. Ano kakainin natin? Awanin. My goodness. The ten brothers of Joseph went down to buy grain from Egypt. They are now going to see who? Brother. Now, if you were Joseph, what will you do? Next, next week, I will tell you. In the meantime, listen to me. The test of a man is not during adversity. The test of a man is when he is in power. When he has authority, what will he do with his authority? What will he do with his position? My friend, when God bless you and you have money, you have position, that is the greatest test. Somebody once said 90% of people can survive adversity. 90% of people can survive hardships. But only 10% can survive prosperity. In order for God to prosper you, you have to prove yourself faithful. Faithful to God, faithful to employer, faithful to people. What did Joseph do with his brothers? Do you want to know? What will you do? You come next week and next, next week. Okay? Now listen to me. I will close 
with the modern story of modern Josephs. I was in a dinner last night, and I heard over 30 plus modern Josephs, Christians, were imprisoned in this country. You know why they were put in jail? Because they were Christians. They were serving God. I cannot mention the name of this country because we are being broadcast worldwide. But this is what happened. They were sentenced five years, three years in prison. Now, if you are these people, what will you do? For the sake of Christ, you are now in jail, separated from your family, separated from your children. You know what they did? They remained faithful. The day came when the warden, the one in charge of the jail, was demonized, na demonio. And they asked the religious leaders of the country to go and cast out the demons. But nothing happened. And the people said, there are some Christians here, 30 plus of them. Let's call them. Maybe they can solve the problem. So these 30 plus Christians gathered around the demonized jail warden. They prayed for him. After praying for him, they cast out the demons and the jail warden was delivered. When he was delivered, he was so happy. He began attending a Bible study. That is not yet the end. In the Bible study, he really got to know the Lord. And he decided this is fantastic. He officially allowed that particular jail to have loudspeaker. Over a thousand prisoners are gathered to attend the Bible study regularly. Now there is a church inside the prison. And when they were about to be released, this 30 plus, they were reluctant. Should we kiss you goodbye? See, they don't want to get out of jail anymore. You know what? There's a vibrant ministry. But the point is this. When you are faithful to God, in God's time, He's going to use you to be a blessing. Not just yourself. Not just your family. But to the rest of the world. Can I tell you something? There is a crisis today. In the days of Joseph, there's a famine. Today, there's a famine. What kind of famine? A spiritual famine. Look at the lives of people. Broken homes. Broken marriages. Broken relationships. People are empty. Materially, they seem okay. But spiritually, they are starving. And some of you are okay physically. But I know some of you are having a spiritual famine. Emotionally, you're empty. And you are saying, who can feel the emptiness of my soul? I understand that. And that's why I want you to experience the sufficiency of the Lord. You know, this is so amazing. If you understand the reality that God is looking for faithful men and women like Joseph to be a blessing to others. Question, will you be that person? But first you need to encounter something. Let's read this together as we close. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. God wants to give you life. Some of you are having a spiritual famine. Your life is not abundant. Your life is empty. But you don't know the solution. My friend, we have the solution. But do you want to be used by God? Two kinds of people here again. Those that are empty, you are famished. You need the Lord. I will pray for you. The second one, you have the Lord. But you are not using your God-given gifts and talents to be a blessing. You have not embraced the idea of faithfulness. God wants to use you, to bless you. Will you be used by Him? Listen to me. God is looking for faithful men and women 
who is going to be like Joseph to be a blessing. If you want to be a blessing, you come forward later. Or I'll pray for you, okay? Let's bow our heads. I'm going to ask the pastors and the leaders to come up here and pray for the people, okay? Those of you who are prayer warriors, feel free to come up here. And those of you who need prayer, we will pray for you. As your heads are bowed down, if you want to have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are not yet sure. You are spiritually famished. Materially, you are okay, but spiritually, you are empty. You want Jesus. Will you raise your hands? I'll pray for you. Yes, anybody else? Raise your hands. Higher. You want Jesus. Higher. I will pray for you. Now, you pray this prayer with me, okay? The first prayer. Bring down your hands. Pray this prayer, something like this. In your heart. Or you can pray aloud. Either way, it doesn't matter. But just talk to Jesus, something like this. Lord Jesus, I am empty. I am spiritually famished. I need you. I invite you to come into my life. You promise to give me abundant life. Here I am, Jesus. I surrender my life to you. Be my Savior. Be my Master. Thank you for offering me real life. As your heads are bowed down, there may be another group of CCFers. You want to be like Joseph. God is looking for faithful men, faithful women. And you say, Lord, I want to be that kind of a person. Raise your hand. You want to be like Joseph? Raise your hand. All right, higher. I will pray for you also. If you have a desire to be like Joseph, right, why don't you stand up? I'll pray for you. Yes, stand up. You are making a commitment to be faithful. And I want to pray for you. And then after praying for you, if, there, if you still need prayer, I will ask some of the prayer partners, what, what are the prayer leaders, okay? Uh, please come up here in front, and uh, people will pray for you. Those of you who, would have, who have a desire to be like Joseph, I'll pray for you. But if there are obstacles, you need a special prayer. Just move forward and talk to some of the men here or the women. Lord Jesus, we come before you. I want to pray for these men and women who would like to be a modern-day Joseph. Lord, they want to be a blessing. We want to be a blessing. Lord, I pray all of us, including myself, will be like Joseph. Teach us to be faithful. Give us the grace. Give us the power to acknowledge that apart from you, we cannot be faithful. It is only because of you, because of your love for us, that we can really be faithful. I pray for these men and women. And to those who are hurting, to those who are struggling, Lord, let them know there is nothing that is too hard that you cannot solve. I commit to you, everybody. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. In the middle.
You.